Hey guys, it's Penguin here, and welcome back to another gold making video. In today's video, I want to cover five small mistakes that many people may accidentally be doing that can be causing you a ton of gold. Because these mistakes can be very, very small, not many people even know it's happening. So anybody watching, I hope you can take away at least one new thing from this video. Of course, if you've been gold making for a long time, especially in Dragonfight, you may have already picked up on these things, but even some of these things veteran gold makers could be accidentally doing. But without further ado, let's get into it, and thank you guys so much for watching. And so the first thing I want to talk about is pretty time sensitive. This video is coming out on Thursday and next week, Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on your region, patch 10.0.7 is coming out. And so the first thing I want to talk about is prices for enchanting reagents. For example, if we go onto the auction house right now, let's look up some reagents, take a look at Vibrant Shards, and currently Vibrant Shards are going for 7 gold and 36 silver. Of course, this just seems like a cheap price, that's super awesome, but what many people don't know is that these items are becoming vendorable in the new patch. I will have their vendor prices on screen, but Vibrant Shards specifically are going to be able to be vendored for 7 gold and 50 silver. So just taking a look right here, if I were to buy a you know Vibrant Shard for 7 gold and 36 silver, I could sell that to the vendor on Tuesday for a 14 silver profit. Now of course 14 silver is not super great, but right here this is a steal. You know, starting Tuesday, once people pick up on this fact, 7.5 is basically going to be the floor for this item. So whether you are a, you know, crafter, you might as well stock up now. You know, I would go through here and purchase all of these. Technically, I could vendor them on Tuesday for a three silver profit each if I really wanted to. Also, on the flip side of this, remember there is an auction house cut. So if you are a seller of these materials because you disenchant shuffle or anything like that, make sure you don't sell yourself short. You know, these are going to be vendorable at 7.5 gold, but you still don't want to actually auction them off at 7.5 gold because of that 5% fee. So make sure you are keeping that in mind. Of course, this is going to fluctuate as time goes on. You know, if we refresh, we might see more people posting even cheaper, somebody might come through before me and buy this all up, but definitely pay attention to this. Up next, the next mistake I want to talk about is specific to CraftSim users. If you guys don't know what CraftSim is, it is a very, very helpful add-on. It is kind of the whole setup that you see right here. And what it does on the very basic level is that it calculates your average profit based on all of your procs and the items you use. And so what many people do is if we just go through, you know, act like I'm on the auction house right there, and then I can simply just kind of search the auction house and it will update everything and show my current profit. So let's say I want to restock these bags. I may click this right here, search, refresh everything. Okay, I can make about 1200 gold. Go right here, search, I can make about 800 gold. I get to here, I hit search and I'm like, whoa, I am losing negative 300 gold. Now, this is actually fake, and actually, I can profit about 40 gold per bag, but CraftSim is telling me something different. And this is where the second mistake happens, is that you have to be careful about the extra materials in your inventory. By default, if you do not have an item, for example, if we look at this recipe right here, CraftSim will use the cheapest value. So right here, automatically, it will use the quality 2 bolt, because that is the cheapest bolt. I have a Vibrant Shard, of course Vibrant Shards don't have quality, but it's using that 7 gold right there, and normally this would be fine, it makes sense to always do the cheapest. However, if you have an item in your inventory, CraftSim will use that. So in this case, you know, I have all of the different types of bolts, but by default, WoW just grabs the cheapest quality, and so because that is selected, CraftSim is using the value of that bolt. And if we look, quality 1 bolts are insanely overpriced at 33 gold. Technically, you know, the cheapest bolt is 14 silver, which is a crazy difference. Also, it's not that big of a deal because it's only about a 6 silver difference, but because I have quality 3s in my inventory and nothing else, it's using 66 silver instead of 60. 
So Penguin, what do I do? First of all, if you have multiple mats, you can quickly just switch it out and immediately you can see that profit change. But not many people are going to want to buy, you know, many different items. So that is where simulation mode comes in. I'm just going to change this back real quick. If you open up simulation mode, you can change the value of the items or the quality of the items that you use. So let's say I just want to use, you know, quality two across the board, select that and boom, the profit updates. So this is where you really want to be careful about the prices and items you have in your inventory. The reason why I use this as an example is because a few weeks ago, somebody actually said, hey, my crafting cost for bags is like 200 gold. You say it's super cheap, that's unreasonable. And after investigating, they had this exact issue happening. So be careful of the items in your inventory and always double check Craftsim. Now, mistake number three is probably going to be the most known mistake on this list, but even though that it's the most known, still to this day on stream, I get many people saying, oh my goodness, I didn't know this existed. And this is profession tool enchants. Many people don't realize that you can actually buy enchants for your profession tools, which can drastically increase your profits. For example, right here, I have a quality two inspiration enchant that's giving me plus 32 inspiration. And if you didn't know, every 10 or so stats is about 1%. So just this enchant alone is giving me 3.2% inspiration. Right here, we have a plus 45 resourcefulness, which once again is giving a whole 4.5% just on the enchant alone. So if you guys don't have these, you definitely want to pick them up. All you have to do is, first of all, of course, you can craft them if you're an enchanter yourself and have the recipes, but it's as simple as just looking up enchant tool and all of them come up. If you're a gatherer, you have three options for deafness, finesse, and perception. And if you're a crafter, you have the option for inspiration and resourcefulness. There's nothing for crafting speed or multi-craft. So yeah, definitely make sure you pick one of these up. Thankfully, they are relatively cheap. Many people were buying these for 30k plus at the start of the expansion. So they are a good deal right now and definitely worth the value. Also, an additional side note with these enchants is that they actually scale with character level. So a, you know, level 62 crafter will only get so much resourcefulness compared to a level 70. So if you really want to make the most out of these enchants, you are going to want to level up your character to level 70. And I actually recommend doing this because for 10.0.7, having level 70 will be very beneficial and also for 10.1. So if you haven't leveled your alts, I definitely recommend it, but that is an additional side note that's not super, super clear. Moving on, we have our second to last mistake, and this mistake will depend kind of on when you're watching this video, but if you're watching it pretty recently at the time it came out, it's still very, very prevalent. And this is the fact that TSM sale rate for Dragonflight items is not 100% accurate. To those who don't know, TSM is still not fully 100% compatible with Dragonflight and the quality system, and so there's a lot of bugs going on, and one of them is that the sale rate for items with quality is just not super accurate. Some of them are better than others, but because of that, you want to take sale rate with a grain of salt. Many people have noticed that my videos, I don't really talk about sale rate that much for Dragonflight, and it's just because the sale rates are not that clear. A huge prime example that I was able to find is Greased Up Gears. This is just a generic enchanting reagent, nothing super special, and if you look at quality 3, it states that only 12 sell a day. To those who are not exactly familiar with TSM, what that average daily sold is basically saying is the number of items that are sold per day per region, because this is a region-wide item. So this is stating that only about 12 greased up gears sell across the whole NA region, which is just not true. For example, you know, I've posted a little bit today, and in my mailbox I've sold almost 400 greased up gears just as an only player. The reason why I haven't sold more is because I haven't crafted more. So you definitely have to be careful with sell rate. Now, some of them are more accurate than others. For example, this missive says 780. 
I still would claim that there are way more being sold per day as I sell, you know, close to that per day just myself. So once again, be very careful. Personally, what I do with sale rate is instead of taking it literally, I take it on a kind of relative scale. So for example, right here, it says that the Fever Flare missive sells about 780 per day at a sale rate of 0.22. And if we refer to another missive, it says that I only sell about 543 per day, or, you know, regionally, everybody sells only 543 with a 0.17. So instead of taking those daily sold numbers literally, I just say, okay, more Fever Flare are sold than Quickblade. And from my experience with missives, that is very true. I haven't reposted in a while, but you can definitely see the large number of Fever Flare sold compared to everything else. Taking a look at the Harmonious, it's at, you know, 157, etc. So once again, I would take it not at a literal level, but more at a relative. Another great example right here is the polishing cloth. It states that only 283 are sold per day. And once again, I am just not a believer of that. There's been many cases where people come into Twitch chat and say, oh my goodness, you're selling that item. I've avoided it due to its sale rate or average daily sold. And just don't use those numbers, use them to compare things, but don't take them literal. And so we are finally brought to our final mistake, which is kind of just a public service announcement about old world crafts. This is me saying, hey, just a reminder, old world crafts exist. Many people had a lot of old world sales before Dragonflight, and many players have probably pushed those to a side to start focusing on Dragonflight. First of all, if you are completely occupied with Dragonflight, you don't have any extra time, you're making millions, you're happy with what you're making, good, you don't really have to worry about Old World. Of course, unless you want. To the other players who are either struggling with Dragonflight, maybe they don't own Dragonflight, maybe for whatever reason they're just not doing the profession system in Dragonflight, don't forget about those Old World crafts. For example, you know, for some reason on Tuesday, I just randomly thought about gun shoes. I'm one of those players who have kind of pushed old world to the side and I'm like, okay, let's just see how these old world stuff is still performing. So I crafted a lot of old world bags. It wouldn't be a penguin video unless I talk about old world bags. And then I crafted up some gun shoes. And in the past 24 hours, I have sold about 500 of them. Some of them I've already looted, but if we go right here and type in gun shoes, right there we have about 330 sold. So this is just kind of a public service announcement to not forget about the old world markets. If you're a player who is really trying to work towards a WoW token per month and Dragonflight is just a struggle right now, you feel super behind, supplementing your stock with some of these old world markets can be very good. These can be lower tier items like random bags, kind of like goblin gliders, auto hammers, anything like that, where you sell in bulk for lower profits, or these can be big hitting items like mounts or other things like that. Of course, there's the whole market of Crafted Transmog too, but I feel like Crafted Transmog is once again kind of in its own bubble just because it's very slow selling. But even things like Auto Hammers, for example, is just a random Legion craft I crafted in bulk and they've been doing very, very well. So to people who are struggling with Dragonflight, you just want some extra gold, definitely check out those old world professions and see what you can do. Of course, if you're already a multimillionaire, you're making plenty from Dragonflight alone. This is not something you necessarily have to do, but just a reminder. With that being said, I will finally stop talking and hopefully you were able to take something away from this video. Whether you learned from one of these possible mistakes or maybe you don't do any of these things and you can give yourself a pat on the back. But everybody, as always, thank you so much for watching and have a good day.